Prima Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly is speaking to Derek Armstrong of Elemental Energy, a company developing stationary hydrogen power systems that replace fossil fuel systems. Last month, when Engineering News and Mining Weekly reported on the launch of a hydrogen-powered BMW car fleet on the South African roads for the first time, we discovered that BMW's hydrogen refilling station in Midrand is powered by Elemental Energy's off-grid hydrogen power system. Derek, it's great to chat to you. Can you give us an insight into Elemental Energy? We started off with this business thinking about bringing some of the existing hydrogen generators that are in the market into the African market, not only South Africa, but elsewhere in Southern Africa. And then we realized that basically many of the hydrogen generator replacement systems out there are not really fit for integration into um, other renewable energy sources and aren't really built to be plug and play. And so there's a lot of engineering that needs to happen in order to get those systems to work. So what we ended up doing was basically building that engineering side of it ourselves. So we use the Toyota fuel cell and we, we think it's a, it's a great fuel cell in terms of its history of running in their vehicles and its performance. And then we've built all of the power controls and all of the software that controls that fuel cell to provide backup power um, integrating it with a battery, integrating it with solar, integrating it with the grid, if you've got grid available, and basically doing the control logic that just chooses which of those technologies to use and when. And then obviously also on the, on the upstream side of the fuel cell, all of the supply of hydrogen and the management of the hydrogen so that it's um, you know, properly stored, properly delivered to the fuel cell and um, in a way that is sort of safe and efficient. Um, so we do all of that, and we've started building projects in South Africa as well. So we, we actually deliver these end-to-end -end projects for different uh, customer sites in South Africa. But we often hear that power generation isn't the best use of hydrogen. Yeah. What is your comment on that? Yeah, so I think that that makes sense if you look on a sort of global context, but we in you know in South Africa and and in Africa widely we use a lot of diesel power and you know, there are seventeen African countries where there is more installed diesel capacity than there is grid power capacity. So the I think a lot of the big hydrogen companies are overlooking the the potential for hydrogen to be used as a as an integrated power supply system, and many of them rightfully are looking at the the really big carbon emitting industries that can use green hydrogen. So things like fertilizer or steel production. And we know that some of the diesel replacement opportunities are probably smaller projects that are more distributed. But I actually think there's a very strong argument for those being some of the first green hydrogen applications, because when you, when you use green hydrogen to replace diesel, you can, you can do it at a green hydrogen price of about seven or eight dollars a kilogram, which is already achievable with, with solar in South Africa. Um, and so it's one of the only cost competitive uses of green hydrogen at the moment. And from our perspective, we actually think that some of this distributed green hydrogen production in, in locations where you can build the supply and the demand at the same time to replace diesel will be the leading infrastructure that will then enable things like vehicles to have hydrogen supply in those areas and, and potentially other uses as well. Why not just use solar power and battery storage for backup power, which is tried and tested? Yeah, we, we love solar and battery. Solar has proven to be the, the cheapest form of, of energy, not just renewable energy. And batteries are a great form of, of, um, of storage up to a certain point. So when you cycle a battery fully every day and you can maximize the use of its capacity, then it's a very cheap form of storage. But what we find is that for many uh, off-grid sites, there's a point up to which solar and battery makes sense. And then when you start solving for very outlying cases of, you know, a bad day where you've got poor solar and a huge power demand, you end up adding additional storage capacity that is actually not cheap to add because it's not being utilized very well. So that's why you see quite often solar and battery sites end up being actually solar, battery and diesel. 
diesel because the diesel is playing a, a backup role um, and, and covering that last, let's say, 20 or 30% of your energy needs. And so our belief is, is, as I said earlier, is about integrating these technologies together. So we think the optimal site, um, let's say an off-grid site, is about, about 50% of your energy is coming from direct solar, maybe a little bit less. Uh, about 30% of it's coming from solar power that's being delivered through a battery. And then about 20% is actually being delivered by hydrogen that's made from excess solar as well. So you're actually looking at a hybrid solution where you're getting the best out of each of the technologies. And what part or parts of all this does Elemental Energy build? Yeah, so RIP is really around the integration and control of all of these technologies. We don't make fuel cells, we don't make electrolyzers, uh, we don't make storage cylinders, but we have partnered with some of the best out there um, in terms of sourcing that technology. And we will remain reasonably te technology agnostic on certain components. You know, as, as the industry comes down the learning curve and as more technology becomes available, we're quite excited about what, you know, what might be available in terms of different hydrogen storage technologies or bigger or smaller fuel cells in the future. But for now, the core thing that we've been working on is, is A, building a system that works in Africa and that is designed to operate in high temperatures, to operate in dusty environments, to be uh, simple and safe to use for operators on the ground. And then the, the software and the control hardware that actually integrates everything together. That's the part that we build. And then we've also, so our, our unit looks like a big diesel generator, but actually inside it is a battery, a fuel cell, inverters, transformers. And then what we've also been building, which we're quite excited about, is a smaller than what you usually see, hydrogen trailer. So we've built a trailer that can be pulled by a 4x4, four by, four by a bucky, and it carries about 100 kilograms of green hydrogen. And for some of the locations where hydrogen is needed, a trailer that size is actually the best option because you can't get big, big trucks into those places. So that system has been quite successful in the project that we've done in South Africa. And it's been uh, of interest to people who want to get into the hydrogen space to use our trailer. How does hydrogen compare with diesel and how competitive is it? No, so firstly, hydrogen a fuel cell is doing the job that a diesel generator is doing in our system. But the fuel cell is not a combustion process like a diesel generator. So a fuel cell is a chemical process that's recombining hydrogen with oxygen and producing water, heat, and electricity. So just as a start, it's, com it, it's a lot more quiet, which is a great thing for a lot of, a lot of people using diesel generators but trying to muffle the noise. Um, secondly, they're more, more efficient than combustion processes. So fuel cell runs at about 50% efficiency in terms of converting chemical energy into electricity, whereas most diesel generators are running at a sort of close to 30% efficiency. And fuel cells also have a really, really strong benefit of being able to run at high efficiencies at quite low power output. So with a diesel generator, if you turn down the power output, it's running at very low efficiencies. And so it doesn't make sense to run a diesel generator at low power. A fuel cell, you can run it at low power. So we can use it throughout the, the day, let's say, to do things like topping up the battery or just supplying a little bit of power to slow down the discharge rate of the battery. And it's quite efficient at doing that. So all in all, the, the fuel cell itself is, like, is, a, is a more effective piece of equipment to use than a diesel generator. And it also produces heat. So the 50% of the energy that doesn't become electric, it becomes heat. And we have a cooling loop that can basically run that heat off and heat water or preheat water for steam in industrial cases. And that's also that sort of heat capture aspect of it is, is not commonly seen in diesel generators. And just as an idea in terms of cost, with today's electrolysis and hydrogen production using solar, we can build systems that deliver an electricity cost that's about 10 to 15 percent cheaper than your diesel electricity cost, assuming that you're getting diesel at uh, pump prices. Um, if you use the heat and you count that energy that's being released as heat, then we can get uh, down to total energy costs that are about 25% less than what you can achieve with a diesel generator. So there's a lot of operating advantages and there's, and there's cost advantages to it. And where is Elemental Energy building projects? The company is based in the UK. Um, we have an R&D uh, workshop there and, a, and an assembly plant. And then we ship units out to South Africa. And we actually do the final assembly in South Africa. So we, we use batteries made in South Africa. We use some other 
uh, parts and components for the trailer as well as for the um, the power system that are made in South Africa. And our, we did our first project in South Africa last year at a game lodge in, in Medikwe. So it's a place called Jackie's Game Lodge in the Medikwe Game Reserve. And they were um, our first site, both from a in-field testing point of view and a commercial point of view. And uh, Jackie's are great sort of innovative thinkers around what to do differently. And they were very open to the idea of testing a new energy technology on their, on their lodge. And so that lodge has been running on grid solar battery and hydrogen and um, really was the, the demonstrator that, that has now put us into a lot of conversations with either other lodges or also some of the, the mining sector and also the agricultural sector in South Africa. So now we're looking at a few projects that are in design phase that are in the Cape around the Winelands areas. We're looking at a few projects up in Limpopo and in Pumalanga provinces both in agriculture and safari lodges as well. What sizes can these systems get to? The first system we built was a 100 kilowatt system, and that has a single Toyota fuel cell in it. And that fuel cell, we can basically stack many of them. So we then have designed and built a 200 kilowatt system that has two fuel cells in it. And once we had got all that design and the integration right, we now are in the process of, of building our first megawatt system. Depending on the application, we might put between 8 to 16 fuel cells in that. And that's designed to be um, a block that can then be stacked with multiple of those blocks. And the megawatt range is really the golden ticket, I think, in a lot of for a lot of industry. You find a lot of industrial customers are at a megawatt supply from ESCOM or bigger. The megawatt block is a nice building block because there, you know, many customers might be or, or loads might be one, two, three, or four megawatts. And that's the space that we want to target. So um, we will continue to build the 100 and 200 kilowatt units, but we are very keen to start deploying the big megawatt units into industrial applications and also looking at things like mini grids, like supporting a mini grid or supporting the grid itself, the, the national grid as a, as a form of sort of peaking energy supply. And how is hydrogen supply solved where people want to transition away from diesel? Yeah, so in some places around the world, and even some places in South Africa already, there is hydrogen supply available. And in those cases, customers could buy a unit of ours, for instance, and just get hydrogen supply from someone who's supplying it nearby. But in most places, that's not common. And what we really like about the hydrogen um, industry and the, the story that's developing is that the systems to make hydrogen through electrolysis are quite modular. And so you can actually look at setting up hydrogen production on site where you need to use it. And that could use you know, solar to split water to make hydrogen. And we could do that if, if we find a project that wants to, to use hydrogen or use one of our systems to back up their power, we would either look at setting up hydrogen supply on that site or right nearby it and basically size the production um, accordingly to make sure that we can supply to that customer. And if there were if there were other potential users of hydrogen in the area, we see that short distance, high frequency de de delivery of transport is is cost effective. You don't really want to go anything more than about fifty kilometers because then it starts becoming expensive. But the ability to make a clean fuel on site is there is a really unique thing about hydrogen, and um, and that's what we would look to do is to help customers secure hydrogen supply near to their their sites. And regarding the fuel cells, the Toyota fuel cells, are these uh, platinum catalyzed fuel cells? And do you ever make use of platinum based PEM electrolyzers? That's been a big um, part of the story for um, the hydrogen industry is that it has this link to the platinum industry, which is such a big part of our mining industry in South Africa. And yes, the Toyota fuel cell does use a platinum catalyst in it, and it's got a it's got a small amount of platinum that's used in it. And we have looked at using PEM electrolyzers for some sites as well. So we see that story um, of the platinum industry supporting the hydrogen industry and vice versa is a very important part of the hydrogen industry. And um, we think that proton exchange membrane uh, electrolyzers will continue to play a big role for a certain size of electrolysis. And we know that a lot of really big scale electrolyzers are often going um, under the alkaline route. 
But as we talk about some smaller distributed sites, yes, I think Penn is going to be the, the main player there for a while. And do your systems consume a lot of water? We do use water electrolysis uh, to make green hydrogen, but we are typically doing that. First of all, it's very close to where the, the site is where the hydrogen is being used and being recombined with oxygen to, to get water again. So we're not really shifting volumes of water from A to B. We're, we're recombining or reconstituting that water nearby. And then secondly, I think a lot of the criticism that the industry has got has been around um, the gigawatt scale projects where there's, you know, we're really talking about hundreds of thousands of liters of water a day that could get um, split and then the hydrogen being exported. And, and our scale, when you're looking at a megawatt size system, you're talking about you know, tens to maybe hundreds of liters of water that are being used per day, I mean. And so in that case, usually in the projects we've looked at, the water supply that we require yeah, tends to be a fraction, you know, less than a 1% of what that industrial site or farm or whatever it is might actually be using themselves every day. So it's, it's negligible in terms of the impact on the water supply. And what about safety risks? There are concerns about the flammability of hydrogen. We are... Really, really pleased to see how much focus there has been on the safety side through the last couple of years of technology development. So all of the systems that we use uh, have been built to European uh, hydrogen standards. Everything from our valves to our pipework to our um, the, the fuel cell itself, obviously, as well as the cylinders that we use. And we think that those standards are really delivering a, a, a conservatively safe should I say, supply chain throughout it. And we think that as long as everything is built and handled to those standards as they're meant to be, that there's not really any more risk in using hydrogen than there is with other pressurized flammable gases, not just the technology or equipment standards, but it's also operating standards. So things like storing equipment outdoors or making sure that um, there, there are hydrogen sensors and monitors on things or that um, there's release valves and uh, block of valves if anything gets uh, broken or un disconnected incorrectly. So I think that we have really got the standards in place now to make sure that these systems are safe and, and um, engineering and building our, our systems to those standards is, is key to what we do. That was Creamer Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Derek Armstrong of Elemental Energy, a company developing stationary hydrogen power systems that replace fossil fuel systems.